Hello. So today I'll be talking about the Pina State Management System for Vue.js. We currently use it in a few of our Nextcloud apps, but we're thinking of migrating all of them. So if you're a Vue.js dev, you probably already have some experience with it. But what I'm assuming is that you haven't read quite all of the documentation. So what I'll be doing today is showing off some nifty lesser known features that I hope you'll be able to find useful. So first of all, a recap of how Pina works. Uh, every store is identified with a unique ID. Stores can use the composition API and the options API. And a store is comprised of state, getters, and actions. There is no need for mutations as there was previously in Vuex, seeing as you're able to modify the state directly through the actions or even externally outside of the store. And starting off simple. So you created a store and you would like to use it in your options API component. Uh, what you would need to use for this is this map stores function. Uh, you just insert it into the computed block of your options component, and every store that you pass will be available inside of that component as the store ID plus store string. You can also do the same mapping with uh, state and with actions. This is useful if you're going to be using that piece of state quite a few times inside of your component, or if you would like to access the state in a bit of a different way. And so, now you have access to your state. Maybe you want to modify it and a lot of it at the same time. So the easiest way to do this is to use this patch function, which allows you to pass an object, and all of the corresponding state attributes will be modified at the same time. However, if you're going to do, be doing this operation with collections, so arrays, uh, those sorts of st stuff, uh, it is recommended to use a function and to pass the function to this um, patch method as this slightly increases performance. So you added a lot of information to your, to your store. Maybe you'd like to reset it. With option stores, this is rather easy. All you do is call this reset store. And basically, all of your state attributes will be reset to their default values. However, in setup stores, this is a little more difficult, seeing as you have no default declared values that you set previously. So basically, what you have to do is write the setup function yourself. However, once you do that, it'll be usable in the same way as an option store. Now, as with UX, you're able to subscribe to the state and to the actions of your store. Here are some of the parameters that you have at your disposal. So the mutation type, the payload, the store ID, and naturally, the newly updated state. This is very useful, for example, when keeping in sync with some local storage information. And you can also do the same thing with actions. They have their own parameters. And if you pass true as the second parameter, of the subscribe function, then you're able to detach the subscription from the component lifecycle. And so even if your component gets destroyed along the way, the subscription still remains active. Now, say that you have a large amount of data that you need to organize. This uh, may be a little difficult. So basically, what you have to do is nest stores. This means having a store as a state attribute of another store. And another thing that you can do is compose stores. You would think this isn't possible, but it is, which is when you have two stores, both of them rely on each other. Uh, the only thing that you have to be careful about here is to not access each other's store state in the setup function, as this would cause an infinite dependency loop, and we don't want that. And last but not least, HMR. It's this nifty little code block that you add after your store declaration. And with this, you're able to interactively modify your, uh, your store without having to reload the page. So pretty useful while developing. The only drawback with this, though, is that it only works with Vite. Uh, but we're already planning on migrating some of our uh, Nextcloud apps with Vite. So you'll be able to use this uh, in, all, in all our applications pretty soon. And that's it. Thank you for listening. And let me know if you have any questions.